Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking through how to do one of the most difficult style problems that you're going to see in high school physics, and that is doing a projectile problem that does not have the initial velocity. It only has a range extended out, like this problem here with the football. So if a football is thrown at an angle to the horizontal, you know what the range is, but you don't know what the initial velocity is. And primarily, I'm going to be demonstrating two strategies here. So first, you're going to put both the V initial and the X and V initial and the Y in terms of V initial. And doing that is going to reduce two unknowns to one unknown. So that's going to be helpful, algebraically speaking. Secondly, we're going to set time in the X axis equal to time in the Y axis. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating as well. Alternatively, for number two, what you could do is substitute time from one equation into another. In this case, that's going to be more messy to do. It's going to be harder algebraically to handle. So I'm going to show you the easier way today. Let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, you are going to make your drawing just as normal. So you've got your V initial here and the projectile gets launched out. So just start by drawing something like this. We know that the initial velocity vector is not the path that that the projectile follows. It doesn't move in a triangular path. So sometimes I'll see students when they're first learning how to do projectile problems, they will do something like this. Like they'll say V initial here, and then they'll put like a delta X over here, or maybe even a delta Y over here. And that's not what we're doing today. So we're not gonna do that. But what we will do is we will draw the vector as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And we're gonna start solving for this as usual, except we don't have enough information to be able to use in our numbers that's okay, we're just gonna proceed as usual. And so I'm gonna start with my components work. This should be easy. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining this right now. I've actually done a whole screencast on helping people to understand how to do this. So I'll put a link to that in the upper right right about now. All right, so note also what I'm doing is I'm putting my V initial in the X in terms of V initial. And this is the first strategy that we talked about. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here for V initial and the Y. And the point of doing that is I don't know my V initial in the X or my V initial in the Y. So those are two unknowns, you could say. And what I'm doing is reducing two unknowns to one because I'm gonna be working with V initial for both my X and my Y axis. That's a really crucial strategy to be able to solve these types of problems. All right, and next, just like any other projectile problem, I'm gonna write out what I know in the X axis and the Y axis and think about what I know. So Delta X, I actually do know my Delta X. So in this problem, I've written out that it's 68.7 meters and my Delta Y, what's my Delta Y gonna be? All right, we are going to assume it's zero, meaning we're gonna assume that the ball is caught at the same height that it's thrown at. We don't know for sure that that's the case, but if the problem doesn't say anything about it, we can safely assume that that's going to be the case. Next up, just like for any other projectile problem, think about what your acceleration in the X is gonna be. Well, hopefully at this stage of the game, you would understand that acceleration in the X is gonna be zero. That's because there's no force in the X axis. There's nothing operating on this ball besides gravity as it goes through the air. So maybe you haven't gotten to forces yet in a year, but if your teacher has told you like there's no drag force or something like that, or there's no air resistance, then for our purposes here, we're gonna say acceleration in the X is equal to zero. And that can cue us up to think about, well, what would be the acceleration in the Y? What do you think the acceleration in the Y is gonna be? Well, hopefully you can come up with acceleration of the Y is going to be minus 9.81 meters per second squared, as long as we're dealing with things on or near the surface of the Earth. That holds true. All right, next up, our V initial and the X. Let's think about it. Our V initial and the X, we don't know, but we did solve for what that is in terms of V initial. So we're going to say V initial times the cosine of theta. And similarly, we can say V initial in the Y is V initial times the sine of theta. All right, and normally we have four equations here to work with. Normally, I would tell my students for a two-dimensional kinematics problem, you're typically going to favor, you're going to start with equation two in the x-axis and the y-axis. And the reason for that is most of the problems can be solved using equation two. Part of that is thinking about what this equation ignores. This equation is ignoring V final. And we don't have any information about V final usually for projectile problems. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this down and I'm going to write out my second equation in the x-axis. And then I ask myself, all right, at this point, do I have anything that is zero? Because if so, then that may make the problem a lot easier. So what is zero on the x-axis here? 
Well, my acceleration in the x is zero, so that means that whole term drops out. Notice how much easier this problem has just become. So I can think about my two strategies here. I do want to isolate for time, because if I can isolate for time while working in the x-axis, then I can set that equal to the time that I'll solve for in the y-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to take that, and I'm also going to sub in what I'm saying is true about v initial in the x. We're going to sub in v initial times cosine of theta for v initial in the x. All right, I've worked it out for the x-axis. Let's go ahead and think about what's going on in the y-axis over here. So again, I'm going to use my second equation to start this off. And again, I want to ask myself, what is 0? At this point, our delta y is going to be 0. So I'm going to say 0 is equal to the initial in the y times time plus 1 half acceleration in the y times time squared. Now, I do have a 0 over here on the left, and I've got time in both terms. So one thing I could do is I could drag this over first and be left with this on the right, and then I could divide both sides by time. Because if I do that, if I divide both sides by time, this time goes away, and one of my times on the right goes away. So I'm left with this. And again, I want to get time by itself. So let's go ahead and I'm going to drag this up here to save myself a little more room. So at this stage in a physics class, if I skip a couple algebraic steps, I think you're going to be OK. And we look at this and that's what we're saying time is. Notice you have a negative answer for time, which doesn't make sense until you realize that the acceleration on the bottom is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. So the two negatives will cancel each other out. But it is good to think to yourself like, hey, does this make sense as you're doing this? All right, one last thing I do want to do is I want to sub in my value for v initial and the y in terms of v initial. So I'm going to say this is true. And now I am finally ready to take this and set it equal to this over here. And that's my major, another major strategy that I'm using here. So I'm going to say set equal. All right. So I have thoroughly run out of room. I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to use a different pen color because why not? Okay. And so what we're left with, remember, we know what our delta x is. We don't know what our v initial is. We know what our theta is. We don't know what our v initial is. We know what our theta is. We know what our acceleration is. So clearly we're looking for v initial. So let's get it out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply it over here to cancel this out. And I'll be left with another v initial over here. So I've got this right here and we're still trying to isolate for v initial now so i need to drag this down a bit further to be able to see what we can do and i'm left with this and if i take the square root of both sides then i can say that this is true so i go ahead and i plug in my numbers and i end up with my answer so that's how you would go about solving one of the toughest physics problems that you're going to see for projectiles hopefully this has been helpful if you have any comments down below let me know i've done lessons throughout the entire year of physics so if you want to learn physics and get some extra help through my screencasts please subscribe and i hope you all have a great day take care